So, let's talk about what we'll need to introduce digital forensics into ECHS's workflow. We'll want at least two forensics workstations running Windows and or Linux. Most software runs in either of these environments, although some forensics programs are OSX compatible. Each workstation will need floppy drives and or external floppy readers for 5 and a quarter inch and 3 and a half inch floppies, zip drives and readers, and USB ports. Additional equipment will be necessary as we go along. Gareth Knight of King's College in London recommends having various adapters on hand in great quantities. We will also want a write blocker as the collection expands, but we may be able to begin by mounting all media as read-only, which is what King's College was doing in 2010. Legacy hardware will undoubtedly be difficult to find, so some eBay hunting will be necessary. There are two big software suites under consideration for use at ECHS. The first is BitCurator, which is notable because the programs in its software stack are geared for archivists. It can be installed either as a standalone OS on a Linux machine, or it can be run as a virtual Linux machine within a Windows machine. Uh, to do that, you're going to need a virtual machine manager called VirtualBox, which is also freely available. And to do this, we will need a 64-bit machine with two processor cores and at least 4 gigs of RAM partitioned to the virtual machine. The Sleuth Kit is another tool suite which is fairly well represented. Uh, it's a collection of command line programs, but a graphical interface overlay called Autopsy is available from the same developers. Older versions of Autopsy run only in Linux and OS X, and the newest version runs only in Windows. Uh, so you're going to have to choose. Unlike BitCurator, it's meant for forensics professionals proper, but it has been successfully used in archival settings. So both of these suites are based on free and open source software stacks. Um, all of it's very well documented, and for that reason, it's they're both really great as blueprints for building custom software suite. And the nice thing about these stacks is that if you don't want to install the entire thing on everybody's machine for training, you can just pick and choose the programs that you will need. Okay, staff participation. Uh, we're going to start off with phase one, which will involve ECHS seeking out a digital materials specialist who is capable of training existing staff who are willing and or able to handle more digital materials. So we will start off with a rather small team of specialists. And since we do um, think that the amount of incoming born digital materials will increase significantly over time, then we are probably going to enter into a phase in which all processing staff, anybody who's handling these born digital materials, will get relevant training, um, tool-specific training, for whatever they need. And there's a nice master's paper by Martin Gengenbach uh, in which he observes that you know, if you have your catalogers working with this stuff, they know the material better, better than anybody. So it makes sense to train them uh, to use these tools. And of course, all staff, regardless of whether or not they start off working with the forensics tools, are going to receive basic informational training in terms of workflow adjustment and basic concepts. So like we just mentioned before, all staff members will demonstrate a thorough understanding of the following concepts how born digital items differ from the rest of the collection, uh, why we are adopting forensic tools and tactics, and why our workflow is going to be turbulently changing over the, uh, the next couple of years. And um, that the rationale for us doing this is that the acquisition care and accessibility of these born digital materials is vital for the historical society's future and also the future of its patrons. Staff members who are on the forensics team will need to demonstrate both understanding and practical proficiency of the following. How to mount media is read-only, how to use a write blocker, uh, how to create and maintain disk images, and how to generate and validate checksums and what those are used for, and how to extract quality metadata, and also how to check for sensitive information that may need to be redacted as per donor instructions, and why we need to do this. ECHS's workflow is going to be changing quite a bit, and so it's quite important to realize that this change is not due only to our decision to foray into digital forensics, 
all workflows change as new technologies appear and funding fluctuates, as staff come and go, and as we learn more and better ways to work. Um, the bottom line is that things change, and so must we.